episode 500 of Prog Review. Today we're looking at Pink Floyd, uh, the the early years box set. I got this from Amazon, the warehouse, uh, that's returns. A uh, little bit of damage at the side, a little bit of a split at the side, a little bit, little bit rough on the top, but everything else inside was okay. So, saved me a bit of money, used the voucher, we can have a look at it. That's the plan, I'm, I'm two cameras set up. We've got you there, and we've also got this one here, which will do all the close-ups. I've listened to this, and I've watched it, and it's been a, it's been a lot of Floyd. But <laughs> without further ado, shall we see what is inside, he says, adjusting his camera. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a big old box here. The top lifts off, by now you've already seen this in other videos. And you have this, this, see, they'll come all the separate volumes come in a little box, which is handy because you can put the other box away somewhere and just keep the little box out. So we'll do these one at a time. First one, you see the one. Oh, here we go. That's the way to do it. <laughs> oh dear. This is the very first one. It's uh, Cambridge Station. They've got this funny thing going on. I don't know that happens. I don't, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, this is the, the set itself. We have two CDs and two lovely CDs they are. There we go. Voila. Right, so I'm gonna have to rattle through these because there's a lot. There's a lot to be getting on with and we'll be here all day. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna after this I'm gonna talk about the actual set and do a review. So it's all it's all gonna be one. There's the band themselves. There they are. Now, the magic, look, le that guy's levitating. Sid Barrett, he's levitating. He's taking so much acid, he can levitate. It's true, it's true. Uh, and there's the van on which the box set is based. Yeah, imaginative design, that. Um, <clears throat> so, here you go. That's the track listing, and what's on the DVD and Blu-rays. Now, what each of these features, a little pocket, and in, the, in said pocket is, yes, ephemera. Look, ephemera, more ephemera than you can be stuck. I really can't be bothered with this. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it's um, it's paper. There's more to it. There you go. Look, see, it's the actual sheet music to old lane. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, and of course, there's, a, there's an advert because you really need to know what the adverts look like. This is going to take me all afternoon. I'm worried all the batteries are going to run out. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> I really don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need all this stuff. This stuff is of no use to me. But I'm sure for people out there, I mean, they could just do a scan of this and put it inside the booklet, couldn't they? But no, we've got to have ephemera. We've got to have copies of tickets and posters. For authenticity, yeah, true. And uh, and here's a little booklet. See, again, I'm I'm not sure about this because it's you know it's kind of tucked in there and you know I don't know. It's showing it's not part of the main book or there's a separate book with all this details in, but. That's not how they've designed it, unfortunately. They've done, designed it like this, and I'm not particularly a fan of it. So anyway, you have, a, you have your Blu-ray, and you have, for Overkill, your DVD too. So there you go. And that's the first one. Now, that's the first one down. I think, I think we're, gonna, we're gonna rush our way through this. All right, that's that one. And we have number two. This is the German Nation. Uh, 1968, and again, I think these are all based on you know slides, cells, aren't they? Cell slides from various things. There you go. That's the disc C. We have the booklet with the band. Look, an unusual photo because you have Gilmore and Barrett in it. 
So, remarkable stuff. Um, as you can see on the next page, the Barrett's gone. They got rid of him. <clears throat> so here we go. We it's unusual having two cameras on me. I'm not used to this. Um, and that's from the Point Me at the Sky promo video. And of course we have Blu-rays and DVDs at the back. And of course there is ephemera. Oh god there's ephemera. He said making sure that all the ephemera is out. Because you want to see ephemera, don't you? You like it, I know you like it, but there's that. That's nice, there's that. There's this. Oops. And um and there's that, which is pink, but it looks like it's come out blue on my camera. Ah, oh, need a new camera. Never gonna happen. Um, so there we go. We've got some more words from. Is it by Mark, uh, Mark Blake? And it's a shame these aren't all in a glass. I'd prefer a big book with pictures, and rather than these, than this, this it feels cheap. I don't like it. Don't like it, but um, moan, moan, whinge, whinge, moan, moan. You know me. You come here for the whinging and the moaning. That's what you come here for, I hope. <laughs> and this one is a dramatization. And that covers the year 1969. Oops, And so we have two CDs to look at. In lovely, yeah, like lovely yellow. Isn't that nice? There's the band again. At Kew Gardens, again, this picture's been used a few times. And this, just think, this year it's the, isn't the, the 50th anniversary of Piper at the Gates of Dawn? I'm sure some of this could have been used in that. Uh, but, yeah. you know. And of course, the obligatory DVD and Blu-ray. That's what you want. Wait, there's ephemera. There's ephemera in the little pocket. Little pocket. There we go. At the concert Cabal Amsterdam. I mean, this isn't irritating at all. It's a Pink Floyd newsletter. There you go. Don't forget your ticket. Another poster. And, of course, the little book. You have your little book it. I hope the camera, I hope my microphone's picking all this up over there. Are you getting this? Good. Um, so that's that. Put it back in a little booklet. Oh, oh, this is this is fiddly. This isn't irritating at all. This wouldn't have happened if Don Ferguson had designed it. Oh, oh God, get it all in. Don't want to crumple it. There we go. So that's that. And of course, this is 1970 deviation. Deviation. There you go. And we have two discs again. There's two CDs for you. Lovely looking CDs. I do like this cellular, you know, microscopic cellular artwork thing. It does work rather well. And again, it's the whole idea of the band, you know, evolving. You know, that's I think that's what it's meant to represent. Uh, and there's that. There they are. Mind you, there's only so many times now I can hear that Mark Mother. I've been humming it in my sleep, I have. <laughs> Here we have, not one DVD, but two DVDs. Hear that click, that's because I've not got them out before. Because I watched the Blu-ray, see? See, look at that, two DVDs. Woohoo! And, of course, the Blu-ray, which I have watched. Didn't click, that one. Um, 
And don't worry, there is ephemera. What have we got here then? What have we got? Oh, that's a colourful one. That's, that's definitely one for the boudoir, isn't it? Uh, Royal Albert Hall. An evening with Pink Floyd. Oh, I like that. I've not seen that before. All the cows. <laughs> I like that. Uh, super pop. And of course, the book it. Again, that is really printed in such a way that you. Uh, it's ugly. <laughs> ugly. Ugly, I tell you. All the words just seem to run on with each other. There's no. Oh. Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started. But anyway, so there you go. That's the booklet. Just got to get it back in the booklet. Oh. Oh, it's not irritating. Really, it's not. Things get crumpled up, and then when I set it on the man, the man on eBay will complain because one of the replica tickets has got a kink in its corner. That's what will happen, and I'll get a thumbs down. This is Reverber Edition from 1971. This covers the 71 period, obviously. And whoops, we have one CD, just one CD here. Look, you'd think there'd be more, wouldn't you? Just the one. What? No, no, no 5.1 version of metal. And um, there's the band larking around. And we have again a Blu-ray and a DVD in the visual department. But no, you want the ephemera. You want the tickets. <laughs> you want the tickets. And the bus timetables. Well, that's an old one. That's for that is to that's that is for middle. Yeah. What a strange promotional poster. And they are playing Santa Monica. And this is a promotional letter. Two and six. Twelve and six. Cool blind. And again, the if, uh, booklet. They all seem to be done in different styles. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm not impressed. Grumble, grumble. Grumble. <laughs> oh dear. And then we've got to get it in there. That's, the, that's without all the crap that's in the big box. Oh yeah. Oh god, I forgot about that. I better get a shift in, haven't I? I better get, better get moving. This is obfuscation. Obfuscation. I'll get it right that time. And uh, that covers 1972. Of course it does. And there's one disc. Just one CD there. And there the band doing their thing. Oh, this is the that because that cover that that contains live at Pompeii, and this is the. Obscured by Clouds remix, which I just threw in the box. Here you go, have that, because it was a cock up. Like a 5.1 mix of metal. Not being in, well, it is, but being hidden. So there you go, and at the back, Blu ray and DVD, of course. And let's have a look at the lovely ephemera. Mm. Whoa, come back, lovely ephemera. Pink Floyd, Chuck Berry, and Slade. What a what a lineup at the Lancaster Polytechnic. Oops, Daisy. Uh, there they are again. RTL. There's a promotion of the Valley or La Valley. Um, some more tickets because you've got you've got to have your replica tickets, haven't you? You've got to. Where would we be without the replica tickets? And again, a very psychedelic one there. And again, the booklet. Which I'm sure is a little bit of errors. <laughs> a bit more. 
likely it might be got a funny feeling there is and finally well we have we have the bonus it's the bonus ball it's the bonus disc this is continue edition from 1960 was it not this is the covers 1967 to 72 so it's a compilation it's all the odds and sods on this one we get one disc lovely lovely blue color azure azure blue in that one and uh, yeah this one's a bit of an oddity because there's bits and bobs on it and uh, but you know there you go and of course you have the two movies more and the valley or the valley um, on the Blu-ray side of things. So again, you get two DVDs, two DVDs and two Blu-rays. And of course, lovely ephemera. Give me the ephemera, where's the ephemera? Is that it? It's just a booklet, oh, that's a shame. I was expecting lots of other stuff, but there you go. And again, it kind of replicates the the information that's in the inner booklet, but you know, there's a lot of replication like that on here, but that's the way it's been done. You put the booklet back in, and now put those back in the box. So you've seen those, now we're going to move on. There, there is more. Oh, oh. there's more. Oh, yeah. Don't think that that's all your money bought for your 400 quid. Oh, no. Oh, no, there's more. Back, make sure that they're going properly. Right, so that's that done. For so what is in what is in the box, he says. Peepo! Yes, there's more. There's another box. There's boxes within boxes within boxes. And this has reproduction memorabilia. <laughs> oh crap. Oh crap. So of course we have a picture of the band, with the, the van, of course, because you need that. Uh, there's that. There's, oh God, there's a big post. Um, uh, you get you get the gist of it. I can't be bothered to open that up. Sorry. Know about it in the uh, contents below. There's another, uh, another poster. Uh, what's this then? Is it a poster? Probably. Yes, it's an upside down poster. Quick, about the Leeds Town Hall. Because I really need to see that. I don't know what the hell that is. Is it a program? Yeah, it's a program. Wait a minute. I saw something naughty. It's the bare bottoms. Wait a minute. That looks like Yoko and John, John Lennon's bare bottoms. What are they doing in there? Because I'm a bit of an expert on bare bottoms. And it's all those Rush albums. There you go, that was, that was fun. Um, no more singles from Pink Floyd. They threatened until until another brick in the wall. Took them to number one, 1979, Christmas 79. And ushered in the 1980s. We don't need no education. That's kind of interesting. You got the lyrics to Dark Side of the Moon. Hmm. So you can sing along. From the program, program from London 1972 Rainbow Theatre. Wow. There you go. And of course, we have Eclipse. It's blank on that side. Right. So that's the, that's, that's that, that's that, that's that ephemera. So we can put that back in this lovely paper. I want it to be torn because it's very delicate. And then we have vinyl. Yes, we have, we'll do it in, we'll do it in order, proper order. We have Arnold Lane. And with B-side Candy in the current bun. Uh, we have See Emily Play. Okay. Apples and Oranges. This is uh, It Would Be So Nice and Julia Dream. 
and finally uh, put them in the sky, which also has a little postcard thing as well. So that's that. So you get all that in the box as well. So. So it goes back in there. Oops, forgot one. It goes back in there. The ephemera goes in there. The lid goes on like that. That goes in there like that. That goes on there like that. And then this goes in there like that. And then that goes on the top. Boink. Like that. So hopefully, he says, pulling the box into shot, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget, I will be talking about it next. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Darren and he was going to do his review of it. And um, and yeah, so that's that's the unboxing of the early years, 1965, 1972 by Pink Floyd. Sorry it took so long, but it was very expensive, but we got there in the end. And um, yeah, I'm going to hand you over to Darren. Take it away, Darren. Why, thank you, Darren. Well, you've seen it. You've seen the box set. You've seen everything. Um, it's a lot to take in. Uh, it's a funny old thing. It's... Um, how can I describe it? It's... Um, feels like a mess. <laughs> It's not perfect. It's certainly, I mean, let's just cut to the trace. It's certainly not, it's certainly not worth the money. I don't, I don't think it's worth the money. The problem we have with this set is it's not, it's not curated very well. I mean, I think there's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of stuff in it that, you know, I, 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 I mean, I thought I was a fan, but obviously... I don't think I am that much of a fan now. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking at the track list in it, it starts with like some really early stuff from '65 when it, they weren't the they weren't the Floyd; they were other bands. And this stuff is again of very dubious quality. I can understand it being of interest to some people, but to me. Listen to it once and walk on by. It's one of those. It's one of those things. It's, it's something that I don't have any any need for. And then we have again a load of repetition in Hard Lane. The, the, the singles: Hard Lane, Simile Play, Apples and Orange, Canada Current Bun, Paint Box, Matilda Mother, Jug Band Blues, In the Beach was, which is again nice to have. Vegetable Man, which is again. Nice to nice to have those tracks, but it's two tracks out of a, a whole load of them. And again, if you're familiar with these tracks, it's like well, I don't need that again. <laughs> I don't need them again. Um, but they're there. They're there, and they're um, yeah, they're mono mono recordings. Some of those, and some of the stereo. Um, there are also some live stuff uh, live in Stockholm, 1967, which. It's not not bad. I thought that wasn't too bad. Um, the John Latham studio recordings are a complete and utter waste of time. It's the band in um, improvisational mode, and it's them doing what they do in the middle of Interstellar Overdrive, but extended over a long period, and it's incredibly boring. Where the box set is of interest to me is the visual side of things. Now you get the DVD and Blu-ray, and you get them. They they have collated all the performances and all the videos and all of that time, and that I like. I like that. I'm not so. I'm not that interested in hearing another version of Set the Controls to the Heart of the Sun. I'm not. I really. That's of no interest. But I am interested in seeing the band. You know walking around and talking and interviews I like that stuff I've been you know very very interested in and again you see Barrett there and his decline which makes it even more you know poignant in a way because you can see this guy very handsome very handsome man just disappearing into himself and yeah um, so yeah I mean those those early recordings was it the T set recordings you know uh, uh, and then 
again, the stuff is some of that stuff's already is in the singles that you get in the box. It's like there's a lot of replication, and you get that with the with with this. There's a lot of that. Um, again, same with the second volume. Uh, you get the BBC radio sessions, but you know, I I'm sure I've heard a better version. Again, some of the stuff I've heard I've heard. I've been I've been told that there are better versions out there. Again, I'm not an expert when it comes to the bootlegs and the live material of the Floyd. Um, I, that doesn't interest me because as, as a live band, you know, I don't know. I'm more of, I'm more interested in them as a as a studio band. So I've um, I'm fairly dismissive of the live stuff. Um, So yeah, then there's the where are we now? Disc three. You get some interesting more non-album tracks. They're, they're kind of interesting. You get some of that in the like I say, studio version of Embryo. BBC Radio Sessions, Grantchester Meadows. Again, you. I think that's also replicated on the Blu-ray DVDs. Um, and a live album from Amsterdam, 17th September. You know, which is it's all right. It's not bad. It's all right. Um, but yeah, you do get an awful lot of um, you do get an awful lot of careful with acts, Eugene, and set <laughs> to the set the controls start the sun. No, oh, Zappa fans will be happy because there's a version of Stellar Overdrive with Zappa joining in. And Roger Waters looking worried. He was like, uh, "Oh no, a proper guitar, a proper musician. What we're we gonna do?" I'm being cruel there, aren't I? Um, deviation. We got Out of My Mother live again. You get a lot of that. Um, a lot of Out of My Mother. Um, unreleased tracks from the Brisky Point soundtrack, which are, you know, uh, uh, you get. Uh, where else do you get? There's a it's just, it's just so much stuff, and again, I went through all the all the video stuff, and again, it's it's nice to see. I mean, it's a varying it's a varying quality. So some of it is okay, and then some of it's not so okay. And th this is the problem I have with these: is that you need I like I like things that are collated, and that's what this is my criticism of my level at like King Crimson when they put out their mega box sets in the old days. I used to collate things and give you the best performances and say this is what you need to be listening to. You know, it's like a you know like um like I say a curator who says this is what you you know when you go around the art gallery and he tells you about the pictures, you want somebody to guide you through it and say this is the best performance, not here's a bucket of music enjoy feed you know feed you at the trough and i think i think sometimes less is more you get more out of it if the stuff has been like i say carefully selected and here you get the feeling of just put everything in and the stuff that you know that i wanted to hear i mean you do get the outmark mother in quad which is it's nice to hear it's, it's works really well in quad but you know i wanted metal in 5.1 sorry to go on about it but you get echoes in 5.1 and metal is buried on one of the discs and you have to extract it electronically which makes no sense whatsoever um, again and again as you go through it you just you know you've got the Obscure by Clouds 2016 remix why? why? Oh, there'll, be, there'll be diehards who like it <laughs> but, but why? but what you do get by accident is live, live at Pompeii stereo CD which obviously wasn't meant to be in there, but you do get that, which is really good. I like, me like, I like that. And I like the the 5.1 mix they did for it as well, because that's in there, and they've taken out all the crappy bits. Though there are some, It's funny, because there are some bits in it that I don't remember being in it, and bits that, are, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, the old, um, the old live at Pompeii now. But the 5.1 mix is dreamy and well worth it. Um, again, more, more, more stuff, uh, and then you have the, the the bonus the bonus box bonus disc, which has radio sessions, which are really really crappy. Um, you get the Moonhead, what's called Moonhead, which is the band playing uh, playing against 
the moon landing, which interesting is in an historical sense. And then you get this committee thing, and the committee's on the Blu-ray as well. It's a it's a film starring uh, uh, the guy from uh, I've forgotten the name of the band. There did do what did he? It'll come back to me in a minute. John Paul Jones, I think it is, isn't it? John Paul Jones? Does that sound right? He's in it, and it's this really crazy, really crazy, boring film about the committee, and the Floyd do about two minutes of music for it, but you have to sit through this really bad, um, you know, really, really, Manfred Mann. There you go. I told you it'd come back to me. Um, it's really, really bad. And you also get more Anne La Valley uh, in Blu-ray, which is again nice to see. But again, these these are very much films of their time. Um, but at least you get a context for the um, the soundtracks if you've never seen them. I think I don't know if they've been available before on Blu-ray. Don't quote me on that. But you've got them here, so it collects that. And um, you know, there's also on the the final Blu-ray some very interesting stuff. There's like an alternate edit of Arnold Lane and Corporal Clegg where they start throwing food at each other around a big table but yeah anyway I've got to wind up because the oh no the red light the red battery's running out so anyway there's a lot of stuff here a lot of stuff you you're okay you see it once or listen to it once is hardly essential uh, again I just I, I don't, I don't, I think it's just too much, it's, it's too too much, but if you're an absolute die-hard fan, I can understand why you'd really enjoy it. It makes me realise I'm not a die-hard fan, you know? <laughs> it makes me realise, no, I'm not that much of a fan. And also, some of the quality of the stuff is very, very dubious. I think, you know, some of it could be left out, some of it could have been, you know, it could have been a smaller set, much more streamlined set, but is it worth 400 quid no i don't think it is it's a shame there isn't an actual book which is an index to all this stuff because you have to get them all out to find what you're looking for there's no master index which tells you what is on which set which is a bit annoying so I'm, i was constantly pulling them out and putting them back back in again which i found irritating um but for the 200 pounds i paid for it i think it's very good value but 400 no good in terms of a rating, I'm going to give this three whatevers, three vans with a stripe on the side out of five. That's three vans on a oh, this white stripe on the side out of five. I'm only doing it because the battery's running out. It's a strange set. Is it essential? No, it isn't. It's good. Yeah, it's too much. I managed to change the battery without anyone noticing. Yeah, it's too much. And again, it's what isn't in it. There isn't a, like I say, coffee table book with an index. And a lot of the stuff that's in those little pulling out ephemera booklets could have been compiled and all the pictures could have been in one master index. Now, I'd have designed it slightly better, made it, like I say, more of a coffee table. I'd have, I'd have turned it into a coffee table book with all the discs in, you know, rather than that, that awful, unwieldy van box thing which is the design the box itself is irritating it's boxes within boxes within boxes that i find irritating um what's missing again the 5.1 mix of metal was one of the i mean that was the one i would have hand over money for but because of band politics and everyone arguing it, we didn't get it instead we get things like the obscured by clouds remix which i don't know why that exists why would you need that and if you are going to do that, why not do a 5.1 of it? You know, there'd probably be space enough on the disc. And again, it's the same with Atom Art Mother. We get 4.1, 4 you know, oh, sorry, the quad, 4.0, sorry, the quad version, which is fine. I think there was a quad version of metal as well, which they could have put on the disc. If they were going to argue over the 5.1, why not just put the quad version on? You see, uh, it's what's missing that's the big problem. Um, and again, I think for £400... I just don't think. I mean, when you see what King Crimson does, and they do equivalent box sets for 150 to 120 again, and if you wait, those prices go down. When you see what they do, you know, you do wonder. And again, if they'd have, 
if they'd have, I don't know, left out all the Blu-rays and just had it on DVD only, that would have kept the cost down. There's ways that they could have done this box set cheaper and better and edited out certain bits and tightened it up, but it feels, to, it, to me, it just feels like an utter mess. It is a mess of a box set. And like I said, I was going, what's this? And trying to, f you know, I'd put one back in and, and forget where I was and then I'd, I'd find myself hunting for it because it wasn't a, like I say, guide just to tell me where everything was. Um, but if you're an absolute fucking mega Floyd head and, and you love this period, then I can see you getting a lot out of it. Like I say, it's was it 25 hours long, 25 hours long. Um, but again, that price, that's the one thing I always have an issue with. And that's why I give it the three vans with the stripe on the side. <laughs> I'll keep it at that. But there could have been a better box set in here. I think that little compilation one that they did is a is a fair is a fair um, edit of the set. Um, anyway, I'm going to wind up now because I think I've prattled on long enough about it. It's a funny old set, and then they put in the vinyl singles, which is really strange, you know. It's like oh, vinyl's a thing. We better put that in, you know. And it's already in there on the disc, so I don't know. It obviously made sense to someone. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. My name's been Darren Locke. I've been, oh, I'm not doing that. I brain myself. I've been talking about the Pink Floyd, the early years, 1965 to 1972 box set, which I finally got in. Um, again, do visit my Patreon and give me money, and that means I don't have to sell it, and I can just put it in the corner and let dust gather on it. Because now I'm going to have to put it on eBay, and that's going to be a pain in the ass. Because <laughs> it weighs something like five kilos. Shipping's going to cost me a fortune. <laughs> and on that, there's only one more thing to say, and that is, prog on! <laughs>